frustratingly fun. That's basically all you need to know about Speed Limit. There we go. Quickest review ever done. <laughs> okay, maybe not done, but I would say that's a fitting speed for a review of a game like Speed Limit. This game, as the name implies, is all about speed. Story takes a backseat in this action-packed thrill ride of a game that puts even franchises like Fast and the Furious to shame in terms of over-the-top action. In Speed Limit, you play an unarmed, regular person just taking the train like any other day, when a ragged, disheveled person stumbles in front of you, dropping their gun into your hands and shooting you to the top of the most wanted list. What follows in the next 30 minutes to 2 hours is an insanely fun, over-the-top, action-packed run from the law where the rules of the game keep changing. Speed Limit takes place across 10 different levels, each constantly changing the mechanics of the game and always keeping you on your toes. First you begin in a train, trying to get away from the police, running and gunning any and all officers that get in your way. Cut to a Mission Impossible style chase on top of the train, dodging signs, helicopter fire, and more cops than you think that could be possible. Next, you'll be jumping into a speeding convertible, shooting, dodging, and just trying to channel your inner Vin Diesel the whole way through. Followed by an insanely epic motorcycle chase, weaving in and out of traffic while chasing down a helicopter to take the fight back to the FBI. Fly over open waters, destroying boats, helicopters, and jet fighters the whole way until you finally make it to a jet yourself and blast through the final few stages and a frustratingly difficult boss battle that I won't spoil here. This difficulty is where the charm of speed limit really comes in. You're gonna die. Like a lot. Dying is practically guaranteed in this game, and while even dying time and time again, the speed and pace of the game never feels like it slows down. Each section progressively gets harder and harder to complete, testing your reflexes and your patience more and more throughout the game. If it weren't for a generous checkpoint system, I'd probably have broken my controller multiple times just trying to make it through these runs. That's the main gameplay loop, and where you'll enjoy Speed Limit the most. Run through the game the first time to get a good understanding of the levels, the vehicles, and the combat. Then the next time you go to run through, you'll have a timer in the bottom left telling you exactly how long you spent on each level and how long to get through the game overall. There's actually one trophy that tasks you with beating the game on the normal difficulty in under 30 minutes. There's easy, normal, and after beating the game, an infinite difficulty. I believe my total playtime my first time through took me just under 2 hours with how many times I died, so getting this trophy will be a little difficult. There are various other trophies or achievements tied to completing levels in specific ways that will really put your skills to the test. I'll have videos up on how to get these very soon. Like other great games, while extremely difficult, this is all achievable and it will just require practice, memorization of patterns in each stage, and a little bit of luck. There's not much to dislike in this game. I did feel like it could have gone a little longer, perhaps taking the action level up a notch even further with something insane like going to space and shooting satellites or something like that. The only other issue I ever really had was just the control sometimes can be a bit frustrating. As you're trying to make these precise moves and the simple control schemes just feel like sometimes you're fighting to control the hero. You play the entire game only needing to use Trigger, so R2 on PS4 and PS5, and Circle for actions like jumping, firing rockets, or holding it down to aim when you're in a car or a bike. However, with each gameplay transition, your thumbstick movement changes a bit as well, and this can get confusing or frustrating. When running, it makes sense. Hold left to go left, hold right to go right. When driving horizontally on the screen, holding up changes lanes, holding forward makes you go faster, and holding backwards slows you down. Yet, when you flip to flying a jet where you're flying straight towards the camera, pushing up on the stick makes you slow down, and pulling down on it speeds you faster into the screen, sometimes crashing into things that you can't even see and killing you instantly. While these changes are for the entire level, after dying and dying over and over again, the muscle memory starts to kick in, so it can be a little jarring trying to retrain your brain to think a different way on each level. Besides that, I can't really complain. I played on the PS5, never had any issues with the game itself. Its simple graphics suit the gameplay really well, and it loads really fast, thankfully, after each death. The game does a short little rewind, and you're back into the action, so there's almost no downtime, which is awesome since I died a lot. I would highly recommend this game to anyone looking for a challenge and who really enjoys fast-paced action. 
Speed Limit will be available on February 15th on PS4, Xbox, Steam, and Switch. And a huge thank you to the developers GameChuck for sending me this key early to review the game. I'll have trophy guide videos up on the channel soon, so make sure to subscribe to stay up to date. That's all for now, and as always, happy gaming.